Good afternoon and welcome to Wissahickon High School. High up above, it is the Phila Field Hockey Game of the Week featuring the Wissahickon Trojans and the Springfield Township Cougars. <laughs> Spartans? She, Spartans she, now. She, As we're being told, they've actually changed their name to Spartans. <laughs> she wants. Interestingly. So uh, in the broadcast booth, Matt Jellis along with... Uh, Kathleen Simone and uh, two teams that have actually already seen each other once this year played a game uh, played a game one nil on uh, on the overtime victory by what's it Hicken no sorry overtime victory by Springfield I believe so yes let me check my notes here I'm sorry yes it is yes. Uh, Springfield early in the season one one oh and OT I was looking back at last season <laughs> where they <laughs> Matt, we're going to have to take a break because it looks as though the Wissahickon is ready to announce their lineup. All right, we'll take a break for starting lineups. Thank you. Welcome back to Wissahickon High School as we get set for the first half of play between the Wissahickon Trojans and the Springfield Spartans game four or five, actually. Um, The first one was a a rain-out lightning situation that pushed it off a little bit. Game five. In the Phila Field Hockey Game of the Week, we've uh, seen some very interesting and challenging games through the uh, the first few, and this one looks like it's setting up to be another one today. Absolutely. In fact, last year when they met up, they split the games one and one. First time this year, Springfield Township took the took the game in an overtime one zero win. So uh, this is definitely going to be a tightly matched game between two talented teams in the Suburban One American League. For Wissahickon, of course, being the home team today, we'll feature them uh, first. And really looking at uh, a few interesting players, uh, specifically in the center back slash mid position, Hannah Havrilla and Grace Ball. Hannah actually um, is, it has had, had an outstanding week last week. She was named to a Phila Field Hockey Fab Five attacker. And in last week's three games, she had her hand in each of the team's wins. Uh, First game assisting on a 2-1 win over Upper Dublin. Second game, she scored a goal and assist in a a 2-0 win over William Tennant. And the final game on the 24th, she scored the lone goal and the game winner on a stroke in an overtime victory over Upper Moreland. So she is definitely someone to watch. Um, is the key contributor for the offensive uh, push for Wissahickon. For Springfield, under the direction of head coach Linda Nixon, it really looks to be how they run up front, and that's Charlotte DeCarolis and Gracie Warren. Definitely. This team is equally talented on the offensive end, and also Maddie Yoder in particular had a really hot game last l- week last week also ironically named as a Phila Field Hockey Fab Five attacker, scoring the game winner in a 2-1 win over Upper Moreland, and then four of the five team goals versus Cheltenham. So kind of uh, a matchup in terms of offensive threat is pretty equal for both teams. We are underway. It is two 30-minute halves in high school field hockey just inside of the first minute of play and already an offensive run out the back line and that will give a free hit. Another key player for Wissahickon to keep your eye on is their goalkeeper, junior Megan Riley. She ranks third of all Philly area goalkeepers from 110 high schools with an 87.88 save percentage so she has definitely been extremely uh, important as the backbone of the defense for the Wissahickon Trojans Charlotte Henry the junior forward for Springfield a shot inside went straight across the goal mouth out the sideline giving the ball back to Wissahickon Wissahickon in the all white with the yellow numbers Springfield in the all blue with sort of silver colored numbers on the field for Springfield is that player who we mentioned number 29 Maddie Yoder 
along with Charlotte Henry, Ella Marino, Charlotte DeCarolis, one of the three captains on this team, Kate Wojcik, Gracie Warren, Anya Kahanowitz, Kara Cox, Annie Ryan, Annie Cole, and Rebecca Berglund, the junior goalkeeper for Wissahickon. They line up with Grace Ball, Sarah Campbell, Elena Dahl, Lauren D'Onofrio, Hannah Havrilla, who we mentioned during pregames, Megan Keller, one of their three captains, Tess Klugertz, Megan Riley, Julia Schools, Stephanie Skoma, and Kendall Williams. Wissahickon coming into the game four and four four in the league, five and four overall. Right now, these two teams are in second and third place with Springfield a slight edge over Wissahickon in the Suburban One American Conference. At the top of that is undefeated in the league, Plymouth White Marsh. Defensive play in the midfield as we are into the first few minutes of this game. Both of these teams trying to find their way out. Here's a ball on the line. Charlotte DeCarroll is trying to get a sweep down the line. She is unable to do so, obstructed and pushing the ball up front. This is taken over by Wissa Hicken. That is Elena Dahl in the defensive position, sends it back. And again, it is Henry on the outside in a battle with Julia Schools. Schools comes up with the defensive stop, but it turns back over. This game of the week, week five, as Matt mentioned earlier, garnered over 2,000 votes on the Philly Field Hockey Game of the Week poll. Um, three polls are posted on Twitter, Facebook, and on phillyfieldhockey.com. So definitely um, a lot of excitement with four teams competing to be, or four games rather, competing to be the game of the week. Picked up on the outside line and carried across, but into the defensive zone, immediately blocked away by two different Wissahickon players. And that was Elena Dahl in the defensive position. She shoots it back outside. Swept through the middle, picked up on the line is Kara Cox. She is obstructed with, and she will get the free hit restart. Cox goes for the long hit right into the body of two different Wissick and players. Called for the foul and on the quick free start. And a shot inside creates the first corner of the game, and that will go the way of Springfield. Springfield's been pretty aggressive, definitely uh, taking opportunity or taking advantage of opportunities on free hits to move the ball very quickly before the defense has time to set up and uh, forcing this foul inside the circle. DeCarolis on the insert, one stop up top. That was blocked away by Megan Riley. We are about midway through, not quite, uh, regular season play for Philadelphia area high school teams. So you're definitely starting to see, you're seeing uh, second games in many conferences where the teams are, are playing for the second time. And you're starting to see kind of the cream rising to the top uh, where the teams that were showing great promise in the beginning of the season either continuing that promise and, and really rising in their league or, you know, a little shifting. Right now in the Philadelphia area, we have only three teams that have not been beaten, and that's three teams of 110 teams, which is pretty amazing, actually. Um, and those teams would be Perkiom and Valley with the record of 13 and 0. Uh, Conestoga, who we featured last week, is undefeated in the Central League. In the Central League, but not overall. Only three teams undefeated overall, and that would be Perkiomen Valley, New Hope Solberry, and Notre Dame, who actually has a tie, so not a perfect record. But none of those three, neither, none of those three teams have dropped a game. Well, as I've always said as a player and as a coach, a tie is still not a defeat. So Absolutely. <laughs> to me, it always counted. Springfield having the dominance of the offensive possession here in the first half. 
trying to find some way to get inside of the circle and also put one into the back of the cage, and they are restarting up top again here. Pushed to the outside, picked up one more time by Henry. Turnover and a restart by Wissahickon. Finally getting the position, dragged up top. Self-start. Heads right across, gets it on the stick of Havrilla. Havrilla tries to go inside the middle. She is immediately met. Poke check from Havrilla. Then poke check again, pushes the ball, and Havrilla has the ability to take a run here. Goes through the Springfield defense, unable to connect with any of her teammates on the opposite side. That was carried back. I don't know that Wissahickon has gotten the ball inside their offensive 30 yet. The defense for Springfield Township has been quite strong and the midfield in, in keeping them at bay. Kahanowitz had the carry back, but then she causes the obstruction, therefore preventing a defensive turn. Restart goes back on the outside line. This is Marino. Ella Marino, the sophomore forward for Springfield trying to get a run. She is dispossessed by two different Wissick and players and sent back into the midfield. Picked up one more time. Kahanowitz, she tries to come outside. Gets it on the stick of Cox. Cox goes long sweep down, has two trailing players. Unable to connect with Charlotte Henry, who was the front forward player and while they try to reset, Wissa Hicken called for the obstruction. Swept back in by DeCarolis. DeCarolis looking for any avenue to get through. She is unable to do so. Trails again coming across, and she is just checked right away by Grace Ball. Ball trying to do everything she can defensively to dispossess. She does this time, does get it on the stick of a teammate coming across, and that is Campbell. Campbell goes to the midfield, immediately picked up by Springfield. Springfield has it inside the circle in dangerous position. But they are called for the infraction, sending it back the way of Wissahickon. Nice setup by Cox, though. She's been really effective in, in getting that ball up to the offensive forward line. I think the biggest difference I'm seeing right now is Springfield Township is spreading out their players more, um, enabling them to and then finding open spots where Wissahickon in particular, when the ball transitions to their sticks and they, they're trying to move the ball forward, they're so close to each other. It's making the Wissahickon or the Springfield defense, making it very easy for them. They're able to cover two players, the ball and their person that they're marking because the white team Wissahickon is so close together. Wissahickon now with their deepest run of the game. They had Sarah Campbell deep. She's dispossessed comes back to the outside line. And Grace Ball dispossessed on the line, out of bounds on Springfield. So the insert will come for Wissahickon from Elena Dahl. Dahl goes to the midfield. She connects with D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio goes inside. Ball in the circle. And a run through the circle created an attempted shot on goal from Ball. Ball back and it pops up and over top of the cage. Nice save by Rebecca Berglund. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her correct name correctly. The Springfield Township goalkeeper. Her legs were a little bit apart. The ball, I, I thought it was going to go right between her legs. She quickly made that save and uh, keep keeping the game at 0-0. Zero, zero. Berglund using every pad she had available on her body, both from the legs and the hands, to pop that ball up over the cage, keeping everything allotted. That ball does go out of bounds on the carry. So it will be a Wissahickon ball. A little bit of a surge here for Wissahickon. We'll see what they can do. Sending it into the backfield. Switch across. Springfield has two running players. One of those. Getting a stick to it. And they do have a wide player. DeCarolis has her stick up looking for a receipt. She does have the receipt. 
DeCarolis has a run impacted. They have Henry in the middle of the circle. Stick to the ball and a goal from Gracie Warren. That was teamwork written all over it. I, I think there must have been numerous passes inside, little rebounds, definitely team effort in that goal. DeCarolis on the insert bounces off of the stick of Charlotte Henry, lands right in front of Gracie Warren. She is able to put it home and has the Spartans on the board 1-0 as we are a little over, a little close to halfway is what I was actually going to say. A little close to halfway through this first half and a timeout called by Wissahickon. Interestingly, Maddie Yoder, who you mentioned during the pregame about mm -hmm. how well she played last week and on just about every Springfield possession so far today, we have seen three to four white jerseys surrounding Yoder. How much are these coaches looking into what happened last week as part of the process going into today's game, going, look out for this player? A lot. I mean, some of that is whether it's watching film or just reading the Philadelphia Field Hockey score reports, they know that she is dangerous. I mean, to score five of the team's six goals in the third game of the week – the only game or the only goal in an OT win um, and an assistant in game one, she is a threat and they're marking her tight. But needless to say, the rest of the team, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're focusing on one player, which you need to do at times, you also are leaving many other players unmarked. Of course, Wissahickon and Springfield play each other twice during the conference season. This is the second of those two games Springfield won the game earlier in the season, 1-0 in OT. And it's always fun getting all the, the rosters, the coaches' notes coming into this game. And uh, and they mentioned from, from the Wissahickon coach, it was mentioned that uh, she says, it's a very big rivalry, even though Linda Nixon, the Springfield coach, and her are both friends. So obviously an amicable coaching battle uh, between these two, um, but a, definitely a rivalry game between the two schools and for these players. Absolutely. And I think a rivalry because obviously it's a conference game and they are always almost year after year after year, neck and neck right next to each other in the standings. Um, the two coaches have known each other for many years. They say they've both been involved in Philly area hockey for many years with coach Lucy Gill heading the Wissahickon program for 15 years. And, if you don't know this, you're going to find this unbelievable, but Linda Nixon at the helm of the Springfield Trojan program in her 52nd season. So truly an icon in the Philadelphia area for field hockey. If you know field hockey, if you play it, if you played it, you know Linda. So two coaching icons in the game, two programs that are iconic for field hockey in the Philadelphia area and featured this week on the Philip Field Hockey Game of the Week with the Springfield Spartans currently leading 1-0 and on a run here again. It is DeCarolis on the outside. She's going to pass off on the start, sending it up the line. DeCarolis and Henry defensively battling for the ball against Elena Dahl. But look how close Wissahickon is to each other. And it really makes it even easy for the defense just to collapse. Five defend or four defenders can mark six players. So I kind of was thinking at that halftime that Wissahickon was going to say, spread your attack, spread your midfield, create openings rather than, you know, being two yards from your, your teammate with the ball. And that could be the difference. I mean, as a defender, that's, that's easy. That's wonderful because you can mark two girls pretty easily. So Wissahickon trying to get something, sorry, Springfield trying to get something going again to Carolus here. And, and as we mentioned, there it is, Maddie Yoder again, that number 29 jersey in blue for Springfield and four white jerseys around her in an arc. Henry tries to go inside to Yoder, marked in that four. De Carolus will now try to go. She's trying to balance through, gets it popped up, and a corner is called as the pass through to Charlotte Henry is unable to be controlled by her before she is bumped by a white Wissahickon jersey and a second 
corner of the game for Springfield. DeCarolis on the insert. She has Yoder up top along with Henry. They also have Annie Cole up there and Kahanowitz. It goes up top, bounces across. Kahanowitz has it and a chance, but no avail. Wissahick and Ball. And too quick on the restart, or actually too forward on the restart. So it will come back. The score so far doesn't surprise me so much in that both teams have averaged less than two goals, about one and a half goals per game scored and allowed a little bit less than that. So, you know, that's okay. You only, you only need to score more than you allow. But um, strong defensively and not necessarily the highest scoring squads in the area. Two very defensive laden teams, but two teams that also can open it up offensively. We'll see how the remainder of this game unfolds as we are just over halfway through the first half of this game. Just the one brief stop of Wissahickon calling a timeout after that first Springfield goal has scored. And two of these teams also showing off their conditioning as well. No substitutions through the first 15 plus minutes of play. Springfield on the outside now trying to work the near side line to their bench. Unable to get through the Wissahickon defense which has pushed six forward. And now on the offensive side as they get possession here on the turnover. And out of bounds off, sending the ball back to Wissahickon for the restart. And an insert to the center and an obstruction right at the top of the circle will give Wissahickon a corner. My gut is telling me that Wissahickon's going to look for their big goal scorer, Hannah Havrilla, number 30. Only one player up top for them. That's Dahl. They go short. Goes over to Dahl. She misses it. Connection goes to Ball. Ball has a shot inside. She is unable to complete it. Second shot inside, third sweep inside. Every Wissahickon stick trying to get a chance at the cage. And Springfield finally does get a kick out, battled on the outside line. Some unusual defense from Springfield. It looked as though they had three keepers that were kind of playing on the goal line. And a lot of the girls weren't marked very tightly in the circle, but they were able to come up with the ball and get that back in their attacking possession. So Berglund able to keep everything out of the net, keeps Springfield close in this one. And a run up by Maddie Yoder. She is dispossessed. Wissahickon has it going the opposite way. On the far outside line, that looks to be Julia Schools trying to get the insert. She will leave it there, sends it back inside. Tipped off and obstructed was Elena Dahl. Well, it looks like Coach Lucy Gill definitely gave some girls, uh, her girls some words of wisdom at that timeout because since then, Wissahickon has definitely picked up their game and have maintained offensive possession more so than they did in the first part of the first half. A straight miss hit on the restart by Springfield sends the ball outside of the line. And it's onto the stick of Havrilla. Havrilla immediately marked by two players, dispossessed and obstructed. Third party obstruction called. Havrilla will get the restart again. She is marked again by two players. Marino, one of those two on her, along with Kara Cox. I was surprised to read that None of the players from any of these teams have committed to any college uh, division one, two, or three. And it's not to say that they won't be, the coaches say, by the end of the season. There are several that are interested. But typically these programs produce 
one or two players a season that want to continue their field hockey career at the collegiate level. A pickup by Maddie Yoder had a run there and she is unable to complete anything in Springfield finding themselves trying to push hard against this Wissahickon back line which has been so standing today. This is Warren, the goal scorer, swept inside. And a stick obstruction called will send a free hit the way of Wissahickon. They try to go bench side line, unable to connect. Probably the fewest corners we've seen for a game of the week so far, and that's because the ball has really not been in the offensive circle for either team very long. But, I mean, we saw games where there were eight, ten corners in the first 15 minutes, it seems. Nine minutes, 50 seconds left on the board in the first half, and we have seen only three corners in the entire game so far, two for Springfield, one for Wissahickon, and just one goal on the board coming off of the stick of Gracie Warren on a scramble in the midfield has the Springfield Spartans leading this game one nothing on the sports fan base network. Wissahickon trying to get anything assembling going and they are sending the ball straight down. Springfield opting to go for long hits now as they have found themselves contained in the midfield by a run of five to six white jerseys at any time. A run down inside. Here's Wissahickon and a chance to try to go inside with Campbell. Havrilla carries to the outside, passes off to Keller. Keller with her first chance of the game. Can't get it out, goes across the back line and a 16 yard hit. So Springfield's defense seeming to stand up to the task as Rebecca Berglund has only had two shots actually on her frame and on her pads today. A lot of whistles abound as it has been that midfield defensive play. Very crucial. And these teams are marking each other very much man to man, causing a lot of the stick obstruction calls to be made throughout the course of the day. And this live stream of the Phila Field Hockey Game of the Week is brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions based right outside of Philadelphia. Payroll Service Solutions is a huge supporter of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll and benefits company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. As Springfield is trying to get a run on the outside line here, it is Charlotte Henry. She has Maddie Yoder along with her. Dispossessed in the run of play is from D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio actually causes the obstruction, sending it back the way, and DeCarolis will try to get the restart. But regardless, she definitely stopped that play. At, one po at that point before uh, the foul, it was a 2v1. So uh, D'Onofrio definitely was integral in keeping that turning into a, a, a possible breakaway. Kara Cox trailing the run here of Kendall Williams. G gains the ball back an immediate sweep down and has it right on the stick of Henry, but Henry is unable to reel it in and Yoder has it, but she is unable to hold it before it goes across the line. Restart from Elena Dahl on the outside. Dahl sweeps through trying to get onto the stick of anybody. She does connect with Havrilla. Havrilla works her way through the blue wave and is able to switch fields on the outside line. Goes to Campbell. Campbell will get the restart here after the obstruction call and she will sweep back across. It goes into the foot of a few different Springfield players and then trickles its way out of bounds. 
prior to a few weeks ago, playing on turf would have been a real treat for Springfield Township because they have been playing on grass forever. And just on about two weeks ago, I think it was the 21st, uh, opened a brand new turf field named after, very appropriately, their coach, Lyndon Nixon. Um, and certainly many of these players play club ball and they're used to the faster surface, um, but not practicing it every day uh, can make a difference, and they seem to be handling the turf very, very well. Elena Dahl with possession there. She is dispossessed by Springfield, sending it back the other way, and it is again the run of Charlotte Henry. Henry seems to, on every single run, be trailing Maddie Yoder with her, trying to get Yoder, the sophomore forward, into this game today. Switchfield on the opposite side. Picked off on the play from Kaelin Locasio. And we have finally seen the first substitution of the day. As Lascalo comes into the game. Was that a card? Maddie Yoder is going to the sideline and she is not going directly in. So there was some card issued to Maddie Yoder. Yes. So the with team will play a man down, which is certainly going to have an impact without that player. And she's been integral in, in the midfield transition and also stopping the ball in the midfield from the opponents. With four and change to go in the first half and a penalty issued to Matty Yoder for Springfield. So Springfield playing shorthanded here for, if it was a green card, two minutes. If it was a yellow card, five minutes. We did not exactly see the card. It was very quickly just issued and Yoder trickled her way off of the field. But Wissa Hicken seeming to not be able to make advantage of it as they have sent a ball out of play. Springfield will have the restart. Wiss Hicken's got to be feeling a little bit of frustration now. They've had numerous attempts inside their 25, numerous pushes to goal, opportunities to shoot. Just haven't been able to really get that ball on goal. And I'm sure they would love to tie it up with about three and a half minutes to go. A long hit here from Springfield sends the ball all the way to midfield and then trickles its way out of bounds. So it will be a restart and that will come with D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio has Campbell for a potential insert position. Drags inside, tries to go right along the line, but she is unable to keep it in. Very interesting decision there as she ultimately had no alleyway and just tried to trickle it down the line. Wissahick and now long hit inside, trying to change the field. Ball pops up, and they are going to call it the way of Springfield. So Springfield with 2.52 remaining here in the first half, trying to make a run to get one more onto the board. Trickles outside, bounces off of a Springfield stick, sending it across, inserted by Elena Dahl for Wissahickon. Nothing doing there on the pop-up from DeCarolis. Comes back across and it will be restarted by Cox. Kara Cox, self-start, and then goes for the long hit. Clicks into Havrilla's stick. Pops up as Yoder is back into play. So obviously a green card issued to Yoder, just putting her in the box for two minutes. I know as a player, you know, many, many years ago, but when there is a player, you're a player up, you need to take advantage of that. That's huge. Um, and I think that certainly some schools, they even have plays designed around that, how to make it work. Um, but especially a player like Yoder, I, I kind of feel like Wissahickon had a little bit of a missed opportunity on that. Wissahickon had the two-minute power play, unable to connect anything offensively for it. And then a shot down the line there sent Charlotte Henry scrambling. She was unable to get a touch on it. Which they can go in the other way. Havrilla. She goes to Campbell. Campbell on the outside line. And Campbell blocked right away. 
and a restart for Wissick and sends it through into the middle, trying to carry anything here as we approach one minute left to play in the first half. Springfield collapsing their defense, nine players back for Springfield in the box, and it is Cox who comes up with it, tries to carry to the outside, dispossessed, and a free hit coming for Wizzick, and they go quickly on the restart. Chance here, that is Keller who has a stick on it. Keller gets it across to Ball. Ball trying to get something through. Berglund has come way out of her crease trying to create anything of a early front and a corner called as an obstruction on Wissahickon happens right at the line of the circle. Second of the game for Wissahickon, just the fourth corner we have seen in the first half of play. Five up top, restart, goes up to ball. Ball tries to drive, falls over on her shot. It goes through, it's still scrambling through. Berglund kicking away as the horn sounds, ending the first half of play. Ah, uh, and that looked like Wissahickon's best chance of getting a goal on that last play. But they definitely have the momentum, and it'll be interesting to see if they carry that forward the beginning of the second half. I felt like uh, Springfield Township started really strong, and then Wissahickon showed their glory the second part of the first half. So Wissahickon using the two minutes following the power play to almost act as though they were on the power play. And at the end of the first half, we sit Springfield leading one to nothing over Wissahickon, the Phillip Field Hockey Game of the Week on the Sports Fan Base Network. Back live atop Wissahickon Stadium. Second half action underway. The Springfield Spartans leading the Wissahickon Trojans 1-0 on the Sports Fan Base Network, the Phillip Field Hockey Game of the Week. Just that one goal in the first half to talk about on the insert from Charlotte to Carolus. Hit the stick of Charlotte Henry, pops up to Gracie Warren into the back of the net, putting Springfield on the board as we stand 1-0. Springfield had a lot of run of play in the first half, but they were only able to connect on that one goal. Wissahickon, a lot of run of play in the last few minutes of the first half, but unable to put anything in the net past Rebecca Berglund. Matt Jellis along with Kathleen Simone. Very interesting first half in that despite a few quick flashes of runs from both teams, a lot of it played inside of the 30s. Agreed. There was a lot of midfield possession, back and forth, back and forth. I felt like Springfield township dominated the first part slight domination or you know slight edge in possession time the first part of the first half and i think after that timeout although wissahickon not able to capitalize on it they definitely possessed the ball more the latter part of the first half so um very equally matched which we anticipated i'm, I'm waiting for that fire uh, and i think that the key offensive threats for each of the team that would be um, have been kind of not shut down, but definitely marked very tightly. Um, and that would be Maddie Yoda for Springfield and Hannah Havrilla from Wissahickon. I think the opponents have done a good job, not necessarily keeping them away from the ball, but when they do get near the goal, closing in on them and making it very difficult for them to put the ball in the net. Two minutes into the second half here, Springfield having the run of play so far, but Wissahickon getting a ball in their favor there and a corner called as the shot inside lands on the stick of Charlotte Henry and she is unable to control it, having a body of a Wissahickon player immediately on her. So Springfield will get their first corner of the second half, just the third of the game. DeCarolis goes to the spot for the insert. She has Kahanowitz up top. It is Yoder on the run. This ball bounces out, goes across. Hit the goalkeeper. Through and kicked right out by Megan Riley. So Riley with a big save for Wissahickon, making sure it stays just one nothing. And as we said earlier in the game, if you weren't here, Riley ranked number three among all goalkeepers in the Philadelphia area from 110 schools. 
she has a 87.88% save percentage, which is huge, and has really kept this, uh, been very successful for the team all season. And today is no different. So Springfield trying to get a run here. Sorry, was the Hicken trying to get a run? And a quick shot sent Berglund scrambling, but it pops outside, and so a free hit will come Springfield's way. Going for the outside insert. Deep ball position, just dragged back inside, sent up on the stick of DeCarolis. DeCarolis tries to get a run. Springfield looking to clear the zone. Wissahickon pushing hard, trying to keep anything in their offensive possession area. They're unable to do so. Called for the obstruction again, sending it with Springfield having open position now. Long hit, bouncing through a few players, finally trapped in the midfield, and it is actually trapped by Wissahickon. They have a run on the outside here. It is Skoma. Skoma getting on the outside. Wissahickon trying to spread the field this time. Gets it on the stick of Williams. Williams deeks inside. She is able to connect with Ball. Ball trying to do anything. Obstruction called, and Ball will have the free start. She self-starts. Ball tries to go inside on the edge of the circle and called for the corner. Penalty corner is two bodies blocking Grace Ball, trying to get something through. Sends Wissahickon to the spot for an insert, their third of the game. Short tap. They try to go across the goal mouth again. This is blocked out right away and sent completely out of the zone by Springfield. Goes out of bounds. Wissahickon will have to restart. Interesting decision there by Wissahickon. Not only did Grace Ball show some fancy stick work there, but she's definitely been successful in generating some attack and forcing corners. A ball right into the center of the circle lands on the stick of Williams. She turns, unable to do so, and a large and very dangerous swipe by Skoma gives a hit back to Springfield. So a busted play there for Wissahickon. They will try to defend again. Two players, almost three players on the body of a Springfield player. And that is then dispossessed and sent back. Springfield clearly dominating run of play here. This is Yoder. Yoder tries to go in the midfield on the stick of Henry. Again, you see Springfield Township using space well, spreading out their midfielders and their attackers, um, whereas Wissahickon playing a very small game. So Wissahickon trying to get anything of a run here early in the second half, and a raised ball as on the sweep goes right into the body of a teammate, and Yoder, who has gone into a more center back position, tries to get the offensive play started. Now she switches back into the forward position. Carried up across the line, dispossessed by Wissahickon, obviously playing with a little bit more fire in their bellies here in this second half. Trying to get run of play going. This is Ball on the outside, trying to be a one woman show. Was and that a, Ball or was that Sarah Campbell? I'm not sh sure. I'm sorry. That was that was that was, was Grace ball. that okay. was Grace Ball with the run there. Okay. Campbell was right next to her. Oh yes, I'm sorry. That was yes. the player that that Ball was trying to get to, and she was unable to connect effectively. Restart coming for Springfield. The Wissahickon fans starting to get a little frustrated as. Yells of come on white for the white jerseys, yellow numbers. Another difference in this game between the two teams that stands out for me is that Springfield on their free positions tend to just take a big hit. And it's worked well for them in some cases. Whereas self starts are definitely the way that Wissahickon moves to maintain possession on uh, free positions. 
with Sahikin trying to get a run inside. Has a ball pop back out. Lands on the stick of Campbell. Campbell trying to push through, gets it inside and onto the stick of D'Onofrio. She is obstructed in a corner called. Two up, that is Grace Ball along with Williams. They go short, Williams and Ball stick inside, popped up, Ball lands on top of the cage. Interesting decision. Looked good and it was pretty close, uh, maybe six inches off from dropping down right behind the goalkeeper. That was a chance ball from Havrilla that was unable to get behind the backing up Berglund and a timeout called with 21-16 left to go in the second half and Springfield still leading 1-0. Springfield's still leading, but Wissahickon, I think, has a little bit more command of the game this half. You know, pretty evenly matched, like we've been saying, but I feel like they have a little bit more oomph. And, uh, of course, I'd love to see a goal. I don't really cheer for one team or the other, but I'd love to see a goal and, and, and turn into a tied game. Makes it even more competitive. This live video stream of the Philip Field Hockey Game of the Week is brought to you by Payroll Service Solutions, based right outside of Philadelphia. Payroll Service Solutions is a huge supporter of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll and benefits company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. An interesting slate of games on the poll for next week. That they're secret, no one can know until those polls release, which will probably be tomorrow. Uh, have to fine tune a few things, but I will be a little bit of a spoiler and say that one of the teams in the poll is undefeated. So that kind of uh, narrows the us knowing that it's at least one of three games, one of three teams. Um, and we'll also see some teams from Chessmont League, some teams from PAC, uh, perhaps some Interac or independent schools that compete in the PESA League, and uh, possibly a, a, team, a game from the BAL League. So always looking to represent as many teams and as many leagues in the Philadelphia area, as well as finding really competitive matchups um, and oftentimes rivalries. So now everybody's scrambling to figure out if their school <laughs> is going to be one of the candidates for next week and start getting their campaigning going. Highest votes wins and sends us to your school next week for week six on the Phillip Field Hockey Game of the Week. Wissahickon back here in the run of play. This is Skoma. Skoma trying to get anything inside. She does get it onto the stick and it is trailed out immediately by Marino. Springfield on the restart there. Goes through, picked up and possessed. Lascalzo had a chance to get it on her stick. She is unable to do so. Goes into a couple of Wissahickon players, but then is picked up by DeCarolis, who takes it out of the zone. Offensive possession for Springfield. 10 minutes gone by here in the second half of play. Springfield still with that one on the board. Long hit for Wissa Hicken. Goes right into the body in the middle of Kahanowitz. She sends it back into the offensive zone but has the Wissa Hicken defense scrambling for pickup as Springfield unawares of the position of the ball. Outside run here for Skoma. She has a pickup and space in the alley. She needs someone to be able to pass to. She gets a connection Coming across to Williams. Williams has a run. She has two players released in the circle. One of those pops right in front of the stick of Sarah Campbell, and she is unable to turn it. Wow, that was that was something else. It was the ball in front of the goalkeeper and no one else. If Sarah Campbell had the turn there, it would have been a tied ball game. Instead, it comes back to the outside and a restart. Wissahickon, though, really doing 
everything they can. I think they're scrambling much more than I saw the first half. We see a uh, increased intensity, definite interest in tying up this game for this game of the week. And uh, could this be it? D'Onofrio in a chance inside denied, but she has obstructed two times. Third party obstruction call. They go outside short hit. Goes to Williams. Williams has a chance that bounces out a side and a run here for Springfield. Immediately bodying up to her is Tess Klugertz. So Klugertz scrambling back for Wissick and trying to keep the ball in their offensive zone. And now an obstruction call again sends the ball Springfield's way and a miss hit straight down the line. So a chance at play for Springfield does not go to their avail. Sending it back the other way. Wissahickon trying to make a dominant run here in the second half. Run of play and immediately two bodies on board and that is Lovesenheimer, the freshman forward who has come into this match trying to create an injection to the offense for Wissahickon. Number 56, Anya Konowitz has really impressed me. Um, she's a sophomore and she has a big presence out there as a midi and a back has been really successful in particular on defense when it looks like Wissahickon has a chance to break through. She has been the one that stepped up along with the, the other backs, um, quite strong. But Wissahickon's impressive right now. Their offense is definitely, they want this. You can see it. Don't be fooled by what we also call big in play is big in size. When you watch Kahanowitz, who plays in a very hunched over position, stand straight up. She's one of the tallest players on the field as well and surprising in that position as a midi back and for just being a sophomore. But she has come big for this Springfield team. Corner called for Wissahick and third of that. This time they actually do go up top. Straight on the stick of Havrilla. Havrilla looking to the outside. She dishes to ball. Ball is a shot. Scorer. Grace Ball finally connects one to the back of the cage and puts Wissahickon on the board. It is tied 1-1 with 16.43 left to go in the second half. That was beautiful. That was so well executed. And I feel like Grace Ball earned that because she has generated a lot of attack for the Wissahickon team. But... And, and, and now finished for them. So uh, well done and, and well earned. That was a lot of that was uh, heart and soul put into this whole offense, uh, wanting to tie up the game as they have done. So Wissahickon after four corners going short on the fifth one goes up to the top of the circle and it connects with ball for a straight shot to the back of the goal. Wissahickon now has the fire burning for them as they are on offense one more time here and a kick outside they're going to go bench side line springfield scrambling two three players on board this one is picked off by yoder yoder goes to the outside line connecting with henry henry tries to get anything she has to ditch back to de and de Carolis obstructed restart on the near side line, unable to be controlled on the hit coming from Kara Cox, sends it the way of Wissahickon. What a change in the last five minutes to this game as Wissahickon has all of a sudden turned on the Jets. They have, and I think both teams, frankly, started out a little slow. Um, I feel like we're seeing their true colors, and it is the second half with 15 minutes, but uh, never never too late and both teams I think have amped it up the second half. Wissahickon and Springfield met earlier in the season at Springfield that game won by Springfield 1-0 in overtime. We may potentially be seeing overtime again today as we are knotted at one and we cross the midway point of the second half but of course that means 15 minutes and still a lot of field hockey to be played and Wissahickon has the ball deep once again. 
long insert back up top, going along that bench side line, far side from our broadcast position. Wissahickon on the self start now, carrying through the midfield. They're looking to switch position of play, drawing a cross, attempting to switch the field. And this time Campbell has the quick hit. Campbell gets it on the stick of Havrilla. Havrilla trying to carry through. She is unable to gain possession, impacted on the play by Annie Ryan. Restart again by Campbell. A lot of blue jerseys in there. I think Wissahickon's strategy's really gotta try to find a corner versus find a goal. It's gonna be hard to penetrate through uh, 10 blue jerseys back there. Um, Back to Havrilla. Havrilla called for the raised ball, but that goes back in possession of Wissahick and on the defensive turnover. And here's another chance for Grace Ball up top. Reverse position hit. She's unable to connect through. Ball now battling top of the circle, called for the infraction and sends it back Springfield's way. Springfield trying to go outside. Three players, nobody could seem to figure out who was going to take it. Chopped down as it comes in to the circle by a Springfield defender right in front of D'Onofrio and sends it to the insert corner. They go up top this time again on the stick, bounced over cross. Impacted, sweeping play goes out of bounds as a good shot from Havrilla. Just watching the defensive, the posture of the defenders as they went inside the goal to defend that corner. I was, wasn't feeling too confident in the defense. They just seemed a little bit down, I think, because Wissahickon's attack has been so strong this beginning of the second half, but they delivered. They got the ball out, um, and uh, I think just need that confidence. They need to get the ball inside their attacking 50 at least. Kara Cox on the restart, and at the time, the reception of went to a Wissahickon player guilty of a stick obstruction. They turn it over right on the self start, and it has Springfield running the other way. Dispossessed, sent back. Skoma, Skoma on the outside. Cannot be able to get the pass across to her. As the Wissahickon offense trying to run does not seem to see open players on the outside line. Now they get a possession here. Midfield trying to get across to Skoma. Fans are starting to get a little fired up too. So it's not just the players that want this. You, def you see some fans standing, cheering loud. A pass through from Klughertz to Skoma does not connect, goes out of bounds. Springfield on the insert, sends it back. That is tipped off by D'Onofrio. She is unable to connect with Havrilla. Springfield intercepts headed the other way. And now a tie up midfield goes the way of Wissahickon. Pass across onto the stick of Skoma. That pass coming from Elena Dahl. And a defensive push from both Skoma. I think this is the first time that Springfield Township has had the ball inside their offensive 50 in at least three minutes. So they definitely, uh, they want this just as badly. And we'll see if they're able to get a little further than the 50 yard line, which they are right now. A miss hit on the backfield line from D'Onofrio causes Springfield to have a chance. Inside possession hit right to the circle, shot wide as a split save attempt coming from Megan Riley. So best offensive possession Springfield has had here in the second half as we have crossed the mark of 10 minutes left to play. 
I think Riley did a nice job coming out, not too far, just coming out really forcing, putting a lot of pressure on the offense, cutting off the angle and forcing a, a, a wide shot. Springfield trying to go on the insert restart. Five white jerseys in the circle for Wissahick and they are trying to do anything to maintain this being a 1-1 tie. On the outside line, restart for Wissahickon coming. Quickly hit inside. They elect to go down the sideline as they had Kendall Williams released. Williams goes inside. She has two trailing players. One of them is Grace Ball. Ball has the pickup and gets the obstruction. Self-start Ball trying to come across for Skoma. Now she turns back the opposite direction. Ball dispossessed. Goes back, and ball was dispossessed while being obstructed, and a penalty corner called. She makes it happen, though. She definitely looks to draw the foul, giving the team the opportunity to get a penalty corner, which is what you want to do. So ball going 1v1 on the defensive line. This time they go short to Skoma. Skoma goes back to ball. Ball insert right across the top on the stick of Avrilla. Shot, score! Beautifully executed and teamwork, teamwork. I mean, how many passes were there, Matt? Three, maybe even four. Insert, pass back to ball, pass across, little dish off. So that was a team effort. Timeout called by Springfield. The sequence on that last play had the insert coming from ball. It went to Stephanie Skoma. Skoma back to ball. Ball goes insert to D'Onofrio. Off D'Onofrio to Havrilla into the net for a goal. Try to put that one into a scorebook. It is not like baseball where you have to have every line written, but it is a Hannah Havrilla goal and has Wissahickon with 8.25 left to go, leading 2-1. Two, two, this live video stream of Phillip Field Hockey Game of the Week presented to you by Payroll Service Solutions, based right outside of Philadelphia, Payroll Service Solutions, is a huge supporter of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll and benefits company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. And of course, always a thanks to our great partners, philafieldhockey.com and all the amazing coverage they do of field hockey around the Philadelphia area, both on the high school and college level. And I know we were talking pregame about how many colleges in this area, we talk about such a, a hotbed of hockey in the club programs, in the high school programs, have really raised up their games in the NCAA as well, too. And we've talked about what's going on at Ursinus and how much they're building things to Westchester. You mentioned now number one in Division Two. Both St. Joe's ranked 14th in the country. And even if you stretch a little outside of Philadelphia, Delaware, University of Delaware is sitting at, at 19 in the country. So this is becoming a, a hockey hotbed in the tri-state region, so to speak. Absolutely. I mean, our teams are fantastic. All 20 of our college teams. And really exciting to see a team in Division One. At, with St. Joe's, Division Two, Westchester, and Division Three, or Sinus, all nationally ranked at this time. Westchester, I think, is out for blood. Last year, they were denied a bid into the NCAA tournament despite having a successful season and despite winning the PSAC conference. So they want to make a statement. And the fact that they bumped from number three to number one this week, um, I'm thrilled for them. And I have my eye on them and all of our teams. Um, it'll be nice this weekend. The Philadelphia Classic will be held at St. Joe's. We have three Philly area teams. St. Joe's facing off with Drexel and then LaSalle playing Holy Cross for the Philadelphia Classic, a, a first time kind of, I guess, called mini weekend of, of field hockey. So if you have some free time, that's the place to be this weekend where you can catch three teams in action. And I also believe we have another Philly matchup this weekend in the college level. I Honestly, I can't remember what it is for Division One, 
But if you go on to phillyfieldhockey.com, every Monday I post the weekly schedule, which lists every game for the balance of the week, location, time, and also rankings if applicable. Back in the run of play here is seven minutes, 20 seconds left to go in the second half after the timeout called by Springfield. Wissa Hicken on the goal from Hannah Havrilla has broken the tie and sent them up two to one. And Wissa Hicken seeming to be playing here for the defensive stop as Springfield having a chance to try to get inside the circle and 10 players back for Wissa Hicken right now. Seven players inside the circle at one point. Springfield has to come all the way back to the outside line. Insert trying to get anything. They are on the outside, bunched two, and a free hit will come after an obstruction called. DeCarolis tries to go inside. Hits three with Hicken bodies, pops out, lands on the stick of Williams, who just pushes the ball up through the zone. And a loose ball attempted to be possessed by Klughertz. She is unable to gain possession on it. Obstruction called, and now this time... It's trying to go through, trying to get it on the stick of Skoma. She does. Skoma picks it up, trying to dribble through. Skoma is impacted by a blue jersey, so the obstruction called. Havrilla, the go-ahead goal scorer, now here with a long sweep, trying to switch the field of play. Gets it on the sticks of, of Lubsenheimer. Lubsenheimer switches across to the opposite side of the field, bounces back through. Now Lovesenheimer has it. Run on the sideline, bench side, ball pops out of bounds. Springfield quick restart position. They have three players free. Here is a run from Matty Yoder. Matty Yoder trying to get a chance to put this on the board, kicks out right into the pads. Really nice goalkeeping there. Yoder had a terrific shot on goal. It was it was a nice angle. She had a player there that could have taken the rebound pretty easily, but I believe that Riley, uh, goalkeeper, did an excellent job in placing her clear very well. And a pass back inside got on the stick of Yoder. Yoder was tripped up as she was entering inside the circle. Penalty corner called to Careless. Kicks up top, gets it on the stick of Kahanowitz, Kahanowitz miss hit and sends it right into the face of a Wissahickon player. And it's a tough one and, and certainly uh, was very, you know, was unintentional, but corner plays when the, you're the fly and you're flying out on that ball, you better have your face protected. It is, it's dangerous. And with today's high school players being so powerful, um, the velocity of the ball is, uh, or even the movement of their body going to goal is, is definitely something you need to be prepared for. That was tough. I'm, I'm hoping she's okay. Is she still on the field or? Went off okay. the field. She's gonna get subbed in. Of course, one of the things that is of some benefit to the players is that rule change a few years ago, adding the face shields into play. And so now all players at all levels, both in high school and college, wearing the uh, the face shields that protect down through the nose area. So when these issues happen, it's a little bit easier for there to be a less of injury caused. I think that was a great move. I, I am one, I'm not the most cautious player and, and like a super aggressive game, but that was needed. And they're clear loose sight. They don't really prohibit the vision of the defense and um, ensure safety. Wissa Hicken restart with Keller goes up top. She was impacted, so a second restart and Havrilla has the ball, but she is unable to connect anything with it. Long pass here by Springfield, sending right out the back line, 16 yard hit coming for Wissa Hicken. 3.55 remaining to go. Wissahickon leading 2-1, to one, trying to come out of this with a split 
on the season series. Ball in the midfield. Chance for Springfield now to try to get something reverse position hit coming across from Bridget Roy. The sophomore forward midi getting her first action of the game today. Landing on the stick. And Wissa Hicken trying to get a run up of play here. This is Skoma. Skoma has Williams on the side with her. And Skoma on the restart. Stick obstructed as you could hear the clack of the wood. Wissa Hicken passing very well. I mean, it's stick to stick. Campbell and Campbell trying to get a man. I, I, am I correcting in saying that? Well, actually, did Springfield? They, I believe, they had one corner this half, right? Springfield has had one corner mm -hmm. this half. This is the fourth of the top lifted hit chance again. Does not dump behind Berglund. That is the second time today that we have seen Havrilla try to get the drop ball and that's that's always an amazing goal because it's the goal is pretty much defenseless she can't possibly jump high enough to block that um and it was pretty well executed not quite there the wissahick and coaching staff obviously having faith in hannah havrilla and her ability to do so allowing her to go ahead with it twice today and with 150 left to go in the game Wissahickon just trying to blockade Springfield into it. Springfield has no offensive connections. They did have Bridget Roy trying to run into position. Restart of play for here for Wissahickon on the outside line. Impacted with Roy on the insert. So a restart will come back just about a five yards up. And this will be D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio from the sideline. Kicks through a few Springfield defenders. Tips off of the foot of a Wissahickon player. And then in run of play will be Springfield. Ooh, I'm thinking long ball. Less than a minute on the clock. They need to get that ball on center and on goal. Bridget Roy looking for an obstruction call. She does get it. Sends through, long ball into the midfield. Unable to connect. Finally fought through, Yoder trying to get anything dragged down. Wissahickon has it and just elects to draw right back up. Klukertz with a run of play. 30 seconds left to go. Quick pass, long pass. Wissahickon trying to get space, looking for a sweep. Has it on the stick of Williams. Williams unable to gain out of the zone. Springfield needs to run fast here as time ticking off very quickly. Drawing up the line here. Roy gets a stick check, impacted her way, and now needing a quick run with just five seconds left to go on the clock. Needing to come quick back. Two one horn sounds. That's wow. the game. And Wissa Hicken has put this one in the books, a 2-1 victory in regulation over the Springfield Spartans and a split on the series between these two teams with both winning on their home fields. And not only a split on the series, but a flip-flop in the Suburban One American State. And Springfield Township at 5-4-1. Powerhouse Plymouth White Marsh. That was a great. That was a great second half. I really enjoyed that. You really got to see. I think the colors of each of these teams. You the first half not quite as entertaining, uh, a little bit slow, and second half. Wow, some good field hockey. Really good. A goal from Grace Ball on a wicked shot, one timed from the top of the circle, and then another one added inside from Hannah Havrilla. Puts Wissahickon two goals 
over Springfield's one from Gracie Warren on the mixer ball inside and sends this one to the books. We're going to take a quick break on the Phillip Field Hockey Game of the Week presented by Payroll Service Solutions and we'll be right back with the post game show. Back on the Sports Fan Base Network, the Payroll Services Solutions post game show. Wissahick and putting a 2 1 victory into the books over the Springfield Spartans. And we are joined by Megan Riley, the victorious goalkeeper of the day. And uh, a few shots that went your way, a few good kickouts, but it seemed like your defense was really strong today, keeping everything a lot out of the circle at times. Yeah, our defense worked really well as a team today, and we all worked together connecting all of our passes really well. Big win for you guys. You played Springfield earlier in the season, a one nothing victory for them in overtime. This time they come on your turf and you pick away a 2-1 victory. It flip-flops you guys in the standings as well going into the district playoffs. How big is that for a win for you guys in the Suburban 1? That's a big deal for us. We're very excited to play in it and we're very excited to continue as a team because this year we're very strong and we want to continue that reign. So two goals on the day today, one coming off of Grace Ball, another one off of Hannah Havrilla. How pivotal are those two players for you offensively? Those two are very important. They really get all of our goals mainly, and they also help with passing and connecting our passing. And overall, once our team works together and moves it up there, it's perfect for them to shot. Congratulations shoot. on the win today. Thanks for joining us on the Thank game. You. And we're going to pass it along to one of the aforementioned players, Hannah Havrilla, who scored the pivotal goal on the game today for Wissahickon. And you were talking as you came up into the box. Of course, we saw the shot that went up into Grace Ball, who scored the other goal of the game. How's Grace doing? Uh, so I didn't get to see much of what she looked like, but it looked like there was a cut under her chin, looked kind of deep. She might have to get stitches. But she was a huge attribute to this team, and she really helped us out as playing as a team together and really winning, and, and it was a great goal she had. <laughs> You had a couple of uh, interesting opportunities in the game, two times throwing a ball up, trying to get it to kind of knuckle and drop behind a goaltender. Coaches obviously have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of faith on your, your talent. What are you looking for in, a, in an opportunity like that? In an opportunity like that, it's just I got to keep practicing and practicing to really try to get it over her head. But with the positive um, feedback from my teammates and the great um, – faith my coaches have in me it just strives me to be a better player all around and really try to get it over the goal first half on the corners you seem to go short trying to get something to, across the goal mouth second half you change it you go up to the top of the circle and it turns into two goals for you what was the thought process during halftime during the timeouts to change that strategy uh, the thought process was we just we really had to come together as a team and be aggressive and win those 50-50 balls. And I really think we improved on that in the second half, and we ended up winning. And just being there um, in the spirit and getting to all those balls and being the first person in the ball really helped us in um, winning today, and that's why we scored that goal. 2-1 victory on the day for you. Puts you over top of Springfield now on the standings, looking towards that second half of the season how do you feel about this team oh it's a great win it really boosts our confidence going to the end of the season and into districts and we're really looking forward to make it through the first round and hopefully keep going from there all right thank you very much and congratulations on the win today yes anytime that's all for us on the sports fan base network the Phila field hockey game of the week presented by payroll service solutions the next week's poll going up later on check and see who the four games will be and we'll find out where we'll be for week six on the Phila Field Hockey Game of the Week presented by Payroll Service Solutions on the Sports Fan Base Network. For Matthew Jolis, Kathleen Simone, have a great night, everyone.